one would imagine that if you're launching a hedge fund here in the US, there is demand on the other side for such, a, such an offering. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, you know, we started our journey in Europe. We are, as you mentioned, Europe's largest asset management company in crypto. And, you know, the US remain 90% of the AUM allocation in the world. So you have to get an offering in the yes. US. We focus our start of our journey in Europe, and it's time for now to bridge into the US. And we didn't want to go into the US with our traditional ETF program or ETP program like we get in Europe and trying to find something different. Yeah. We've been trading, our DNA is asset management and hedge fund business. We were doing community business before that in a hedge fund style. So we say it's time to go back to our roots and you know, offer the US market a, a hedge fund offering, especially when everybody is leaving the US. So what a better time to get in the US when everybody is exiting. OK, so you're taking a sort of controversial move because people are exiting because they're worried about regulation in particular, yeah. perhaps people building their businesses elsewhere. We're looking at Gary Gensler really talking tough against the industry. What are institutional clients, investors talk, saying about this? So I'm not sure if it's controversial or contrarian. You know, contrarian, we, yes, that's better. When we started our journey in 2013 in crypto, I guarantee you we were very contrarian and people were telling us, what are you doing? So <laughs> it's kind of part of our, again, DNA to be doing this kind of move. Uh, you know, we're not building the hedge fund business, the hedge fund are not based in the US, they are distributed and available for US investors, and that's very, very different. And, you know, our game is like, how do we bring this product and extend our product offering into the US? Our legacy product has never been distributed in the US, never been available to US investors. Mm. This is the very first time now that we can bring this product to market to a US audience, and there is an appetite for that in the US. There is a lack of product availability in the US. You obviously get the GBTC availability, but beyond that, there's a few little number of players. So bringing a bit of uh, diversity and different view and different thinking is, is a great advantage. Is it generally going to be exposure to Bitcoin and some of the clearly not expected to be deemed so, securities? Yeah, so asset? first of all, it's liquid. It's liquid. So everything we do is like 100% liquid. We don't do like 10 years VC fund in that, in that approach. Mm. So it's like liquid investment, uh, monthly redemption, monthly subscription. So very, very kind of easy to invest. And, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be able to follow as well uh, market capital, market, market capitalization and liquidity. So, you know, we're going to really focus on Bitcoin, if uh, mainly, which are like kind of the big thematic we are seeing interest from. The thing is, like the fundamental question, whatever corner of the investing universe you're in is what is the value of holding Bitcoin in a portfolio? Mm -hmm from yeah. an asset allocation standpoint, or if you're a retail investor, what, what's your argument? It's a, very, it's a very interesting point, because if you look at our start of our journey, we come into it as a deep, deep value investor in CoinShare, with our CoinShare eyes. So we started buying Bitcoin in 2013, seeing how it will transform and how a shock on the demand side will have an, implic an immediate effect on the price, because the offer is constrained by code, constrained by law, it's 21 million, nothing else. Mm. And for us, it was a very appealing process. I think the, the, the narrative got lost a little bit in the meantime because of the speculation happening around crypto. And we can see now that the stats on-chain and also off-chain are showing that people are like starting to hold to their Bitcoin and not letting them go. There is a coin share research which came out this week uh, where we can see that the amount of Bitcoin hold on-chain for one year not moving, two years, three years, four years, up to five years, are now at an all-time high. So people are starting to realize uh, and go back to the real principle of Bitcoin, for instance, it was a reserve, kind of a reserve of, of value, uh, a way of storing value for them for long term and not kind of just like a trading asset. So it's a very interesting part for portfolio allocation strategy. And in our coin share model, we want people to be able to come to us and say, OK, we want to allocate beta with you. And if you want to go beyond beta, you go to our hedge fund division and have either an overlay or a complete alpha strategy. Uh, what was it like setting up the business here? I spoke to Chris Larson three weeks ago, the Ripple co-founder, who, you know, he is one of the biggest advocates, advocates for the underlying blockchain technology, has his own token. But he told me that basically the Fed, rural government mm -hmm. and the Fed and the Biden administration have killed the prospects through regulation in this country. So, you know, CoinShare have a presence in the U.S. since 2017. Uh, we have a broker dealer in the U.S. since 2018. Uh, we have grown up this broker dealer so they can distribute our product, which are effectively offshore products, so they are available for onshore investors. So the capacity to do it is very available in the U.S. It has to be done properly, uh, done with the right people and in the right manner. And if you just go on this journey and accept to go on the journey and not say, we're just going to do it the way we want, 
uh, then there is a kind of a clear roadmap you can follow. Can you tell us on your journey, you're out here marketing, I'm sure. I'm not marketing. marketing. You're out here having discussions about the offering of that you're going to be uh, attracting investors towards. Of course. And therefore, who are you speaking to? I think the, 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 the people who are interested in this kind of offering, you know, nothing we're doing here is for retail. It's all accredited investors, qualified buyer and, and more sophisticated investors. And you can see like an interest going from, you know, RIA at the bottom of the stack up to very sophisticated asset management company who are looking for sleeve of diversification because it's not very easy when you are a multi-billion dollar hedge fund to just create a pocket of liquidity just for that. So it's like, how do I find the right partner to be able to grow and allocate?